And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. All right, today we have a heavy game, although the game isn't a heavy game. It says it takes an hour to play, but probably closer to an hour and a half. And that's Mi Tierra, which is a game about farming. And before you run away screaming, remember that one of the most highest rated games is about farming Agricola. Is this a good game? Let's find out. So here is the board, and, and I really think that they have futuristically planned expansions for this because up here you have a spot for turn order, and, uh, and there's only four players in the game, but there's a spot for six. There's a little season track here, which isn't mentioned in the rules. There's a building up here, which is not used. And down here is this big arena with judging for animals not used. So I'm assuming there's some kind of expansion on the way. But this is your typical worker placement game. Each player gets three workers of their color. Now, interestingly enough, the colors are red, uh, blue, black, and orange. But for some reason, they didn't include orange cubes. You need to use a yellow cube for them. Uh, and whoever goes first on the first turn has less money. And there's a money track over here because money is the point of this game. And on a player's turn, they are allowed to place this worker on any of the brown spots on the board, the different places to put workers, or they can place them on the farm in one of their orchards. Now, each, and yes, everyone has their own orchard here. Hooray! After everyone's done doing that, we resolve each area. And so let me explain how each area is resolved. It's really easy. Up here, in this area, you roll a die. Oh, and I should mention, by the way, this game has an, a unique place of way of placing workers. When you place a worker in a spot, you're allowed to place as many workers as you want as long as they're all in the same spot. So anyway, take that as you will. When you have a worker up here, you're going to roll a die. And I should mention here, this game comes with a die with one shoe and two shoes and with one, two, and three spiders. I have no idea. Spiders and shoes have nothing to do with the game, but they have this shoe spider logo on their box and a shoe spider logo on another box with dice in that game. So I'm just assuming that's like one of the things of their company. But this one has uh, four sides with a one and two sides with a two. The spider die has three ones, two twos, and a three. Anyhow, you roll this die. If you get a one, you put a new place in your barn or in, in your farm to store animals. If you roll a two, you have a spot to put three animals. If you take both spots here, then you can simply just take the one for three animals. Then here, you roll a white die, and that is how many sheep you get. Sheep are these little white cubes, and you put them in an area you can't mix in your barn. You know, so if I put three sheep here, that's fine. I could even put a sheep here, but then I can't put chickens in that area. Uh, over here, you get more workers. You can have up to five workers, so there's two more workers for each color over here. Uh, the problem is, each turn you have to pay two dollars for each worker you have over three. Moving up here, if you go here, you will roll the white die. On a one, you get an apple. On a two, you get wheat. And on a three, you get grapes. You will take whichever one you roll, and you will add that to your farm in one of the spaces here. So I could put the apples next to my existing apples. If I got a weed, I could put it over there. In this spot, you roll the green die for cows. You roll the white die here for chickens. And then over here, you are if you have three sheep, and let's focus up a little bit there so you can see it. Here, if you have three sheep, you can pay $5 and take a wool card. And we have cards for all the different resources over here, lots of different resources. You, If you have two cows, you can pay $5 for a milk. And if you have four chickens, pay $5 for an egg. Um, down here, you can look and see what markets are coming. It's kind of like a way to look ahead and rearrange them if you want. Down here, if you have a milk, two eggs, and $8, you can pay and get a cake. Yum. Over here, you can pay three wool and $7 and get some clothes. And here you can convert grain into flour and uh, grapes into wine. Now, 
You can also, if you'd like, instead of placing a worker there, as I said, you can place a worker in an orchard. If you place a worker on an, an apple orchard, for example, you get an apple. If there's two apples connected, you would get two. Two's the most you can get, though, so even if I have a third apple, I'm only going to get two, although there's a special technology to get more. In fact, I should mention that. This is a unique thing of the game. You can place workers up here to get extra technologies to put into your farm. You have room for three of them. And when you put your worker out, you pay a dollar for however many cards you touch. So if I put it in the middle, I can touch all four cards, or I can just touch one. And we buy these in turn order. So if I'm not going first, I might put it on two, just so I get at least one of the two of them. And each one of these gives you special ability. This one lets you reroll a die once per turn. This one every turn, if you have two cows, you get a milk for free. Here, you, if you have, you can change two grain into a bag of flour for free, etc. And so the technologies, they'll change as the game progresses, uh, but, you know, it's going to be different each time. Then, after you do all these buildings, and you get your stuff from your farm, the last place in the board is down here. And down here, you will be putting people to sell at the market. Now, no matter what happens, you can always sell at the black market. For example, you can sell an apple for $2, you can sell two grapes for $4, that's ridiculous. What you'd rather do is sell here. And there's four stores. And once you use a store, that card is gone. And then we would draw the top one from the deck and put that out. So for example here, I can sell up to four grapes for $7 each. Or I can sell up to two grapes for $8 each. I can sell meat for eight, up to eight of them for $2 each. You say, what's meat? Well, if I take sheep, cows, or chicken and there's not enough spots to put them, I take the extra ones I would have gotten as meat. Here for one time I can trade in two meat, two apples, and a grape for $21. Now this deck is divided into A and B, and as the game progresses, you're going to get to the other stuff here. You sell wine for $14 each, flour for $12 each, any card for three, any, any animals for four, milk for ten, etc, etc. And when you get through the last card of this deck, Actually, no, that's not when the game's over. I need to mention that there are several events in this deck, in both decks. Sometimes they'll make you lose half your animals. Sometimes they'll make you lose uh, some of your cards. These cards will show up and they're, they're marked as an event card rather than a store card. Well, in the B deck, there are three of these events. And these events have a yellow star. For example, this event here uh, brings down the price of all fruits. And when that event is in play, when the third event of these comes into play, then the game is going to be over. And whoever has the most money is the winner. All goods and all animals are sold for almost nothing at that point, with the exception of the shirts and cakes. Those resources are sold for $49 and $47. Uh, the cakes are $49 and the shirts are $47. That's amazing and huge. So uh, one more thing I want to note about these uh, resources cards. They're, they're good quality, uh, but there's also threes of all the resources, too, as you collect them and go back and forth. At the end of the game, whoever has the most money is the winner. All right, Mi Tierra is, in my opinion, essentially a light version of Agricola. It's very fast, very simple. This is a game that I found worked exceptionally well with kids. I played it many, several times with kids, like four, four times where I had different groups of kids playing the game and they enjoyed it. And everyone had fun and they were able to buy things and sell them. And I thought, huh, let me play this with adults. And so I did. And they also enjoyed it. It was a game uh, that I'm still not convinced is 100% balanced. I mean, $49 for the, for the cake. Does that work in the course of the game? Maybe it does, I don't know. Uh, but I like Agricola, wherever we have it, right here. It's a fun game, uh, but this is one I could pull out, set up faster and teach faster. It doesn't have probably the immense replayability Agricola does because there's no special cards. But this is one, this is like a, almost like a, uh, on the same level of Stone Age. I, I, this was a big surprise to me. The QT artwork, the beautiful board, the different goods, the different paths of strategies, I enjoyed it. What about you? I liked it because of all the different choices that you could have, but the bad part of it is because you have a little bit of people and so many choices, which is a good thing because you can always get something different each turn. Yeah, but you can buy more workers too. Mm -hmm. So what's the best thing to build in this game? I don't know. <laughs> Cows? No, I don't know. Sheep? Uh, it's, there's, there's different things. There's definitely interaction that you're blocking other people, going to the store, using the store that someone else was going to use first. 
Ah, just good times all around. This is a game that I can highly recommend. Uh, I was not expecting it to be as fun as it was. A very good game, Mi Tierra. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. <laughs>